Uh, so hello, uh, to begin. Uh, my name is Matt Stellingworth, and I am officially the least qualified person you'll be listening to today, which is, I think, why I've been put on first when most of the people aren't here. So, uh, and as I said before, I do have a confession to make. I have not put the work into this uh, talk that I should have put, right? I was trying to yesterday. Uh, I ended up going down the Wikipedia rabbit hole. Now, I know there's a lot of academics and students in the room who are losing their minds at the thought of referencing Wikipedia. I don't want you to worry, I didn't reference Wikipedia. I just read Wikipedia and then reference the references at the bottom of the Wikipedia article. Uh, and when in doubt, just Google Scholar search what you're going to study, copy and paste the abstracts into a Word document, every third word, right-click synonym, right-click synonym, right-click synonym. You worry that's not enough, control F, select all of the spaces in the document, and turn all of the spaces into white full stops. Sure, by a A-minus degree, take that plagiarism software. Uh, now, but I ended up going down that, that Wikipedia blue hyperlink uh, vortex and spent two hours yesterday when I should have been working on this, reading up on the history of the Turkish Football League and the rivalry between Galatasaray and Fenerbahce, right? Which is fascinating, by the way. Because while it's a local rivalry, the two clubs are both in Istanbul, they're actually on opposite sides of the city, which, as we all know, is separated by the Bosphorus Strait, one of the many geographic boundaries between Europe and Asia. So while they're in the same city, they're actually in different continents. It's quite fascinating how that fact can be reflected in the different cultures and histories of the respective football clubs. Anyway, so... Um, now, that might seem what my mum would call useless knowledge, and I am a lover of useless knowledge. You are looking at the proud uh, owner and cover-to-cover -cover memoriser of the 1996 Guinness Book of Records, a very fine vintage, I think we'd all agree, right? And that would seem like classic useless knowledge. Until yesterday, I was staying at a hotel down the road, I felt like dinner after reading up on Turkish football. I went to my local kebab shop, all right, I was chatting to the guy behind the counter, turns out he's Turkish. I spot a Galatasaray logo, a badge on the back wall. We begin to wax lyrical about Galatasaray. What a fantastic signing Wesley Schneider was from Inter Milan in 2013. I mean, my goodness, he should have won the 2010 Ballon d'Or. And he was still under 30, and his game never relied on physicality that much anyway. Anyway, we're now best friends. He just added me on Facebook and says that I am welcome back any time for free chicken and chips. There is no such thing as useless information, all right? And that's essentially what I'm here to defend. I'm here to defend the useless degree. I'm talking about the arts, the humanities, the social sciences. And here at Goldsmiths, I feel I'm very much in the right place to do this, okay? Uh, because I had what we all had, I think, was, was I was actively talked out of studying the arts, all right? And increasingly, as costs for universities rise and living costs skyrocket, more and more people are pushed out of it. It becomes something akin to, it's, it's, a, it's a luxury, isn't it? It's a luxury pursuit for the elite. It's sort of, an arts degree is an academic yacht racing. Um, and, and, that's, and increasingly the case is you'll never get a job doing that. We've all heard that, haven't we? And it seems that, to me, an arts degree is held to a higher standard than a lot of other ones, isn't it? You'll never get a job. You're going to, what, you're going to study art history. You're not going to get a job being an art historian, are you? You're probably just going to be a teacher. Yes, that's fine, isn't it? When was the last time you heard someone go, oh, you're studying astrophysics, you're never going to get a job doing that, you'll probably just end up teaching physics. No, there seems to be a double standard between the two. I went to university with a lot of people who studied mathematics, none of them have solved any of the Clay Mathematics Institute Millennium problems yet, they must all be failures, all right? And, and, and I personally think that in a market where employees keep crying out for arts, Students. They love our diverse knowledge bases, our unique educational histories, and the critical skills that are the cornerstone of an arts degree, more so, I would argue, than any other. That it seems wasteful that we keep talking people out of these, right? And, and it, mainly it is, isn't it? The debate is you'll never get a job doing that, right? You need, because you need to get a degree that gets you a specific job that has a specific pay scale that you know in advance that you need that pay to pay back the massive student loan for the degree that you needed to get to get the job that you wanted with the degree that was necessary to get that job, the job being the one that you needed to pay back the degree that you needed to, for the job that the degree required, provided you had the adequate work experience. Now, and... Uh, <laughs> 
and, and that, is, that is not even the case, to be honest. Right, recent figures from Trinity College Dublin, and these are reflective of many universities, found amongst their arts degree, arts, humanities, and social science graduates, 12% were currently out of work. Health sciences, 11%. Engineering, 25 All right? Now, and that says to me that there is demand for arts students, yet increasingly we are talking people out studying those. Right? And I would argue that now more than ever it is important to have art students, important to have that critical thinking and analysis. In the world of fake news, of anti-vaxxers, of climate change denial, a broad academic base and critical thinking are key, more important now than perhaps they ever were, right? And it is specifically the emphasis on critical thinking because, and as I think we would all agree, uh, universities can no longer get by simply providing us with facts and dates and equations, if indeed they ever could get away with providing us those. Because now more than ever, the ability is in arguing facts and dates and equations, often with people who are not even going to believe in the facts, dates and equations that you learned at university. We now live in that world. Now, the reason I've been thinking about this, essentially, uh, is threefold, right? Firstly, a friend of mine, his daughter was accepted into a very prestigious university, right? And he was incredibly proud until she broke the news to him that she was going to study Spanish. Now, to say he was disappointed would be an insult to the concept of disappointment. Now, and, and he argued with him, he raged late into the night, he was like, what, what kind of job is she going to get in that classic utilitarian sort of capitalist way? What is she going to do? What is the return for my money if she studies Spanish? And I don't know what job she's going to do as a Spanish graduate. What I do know is there are 21 more countries in the world where Spanish is an official language, where whatever job she can do, she can now do down the line. And what jobs she's going to get, I don't know, but she can now communicate with 437 million more people on Earth, all right? That's a lot more poetry, a lot more books, novels, a lot more films to watch, a lot more academic papers that you can read. Hell, that's almost half a billion more people that you can now communicate well enough with that you might be able to fall in love with them. What kind of other degree could hope on that return and investment, right? If soulmates and true love exist, she just increased her chances by half a billion people, right? Uh, and secondly, I recently met my first creationist. Now, uh, I was going to ask, do we have any in? But this seems like the wrong environment for them to come to. Uh, and, and I had the argument, I think we all have, if you've met one, she sat me down and she goes, well, we, what the, the fossil record, there's, there's missing links, there's no evidence of evolution from primates, it's ridiculous, I don't believe it, I don't understand it, there's no evidence. And she's right, isn't there? I mean, uh, the only fossil evidence that I can think of would be Sahelanthropus chardensis, Orin, Tunganensis, uh, Kenyanthropus platyops, Artipithecus cadaver, Artipithecus rabidus, Australopithecus anamensis, Australopithecus aparensis, Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus barocazali, Australopithecus gahi, Australopithecus sediva, Paranthropus aethiopicus, Paranthropus boisei, Paranthropus robustus, Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, Homo erectus, Homo ancestor, Homo delta, Homo rhodesiensis, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis, and archaic Homo sapiens. Then hell, what do I know? Now, thank you, the biggest reaction of the night. I planned on that, right? That is, that is, that is two papers in evolutionary anthropology and a minor in primatology coming back nine years after the facts to help me out in the pinch, right? Uh, and and the, main, the main sort of uh, reason that this was on my mind, uh, actually, was recently I was doing a show, a comedy show, and, and I finished with a quote, right, which is a classic arts essay trick, isn't it? You finish on a quote to leave the emotional and intellectual heavy lifting of your final line to someone much more qualified than yourself. Uh, and I just finished with the, the classic quote, oft repeated, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. At which point a man stood up in the back and goes, yes, but those who do study history are doomed to make coffee. Um, now, I got, I'll be cards on the table, guys. He didn't actually say that. I thought of that backstage, but it seemed very self-indulgent to just tell you a joke that I came up with. 
So I put it into the imagined character in the scenario, and now I've got a little bit of a laugh. I frankly don't want to give him the credit for that, all right? That's mine, but it holds true nonetheless, right? The, you don't study history, what's the point? Now, a recent study by YouGov found that more than two-thirds of British citizens believe that the British Empire was a good idea, and more than 70% believe that colonised countries are better off than they would have been otherwise, right? I would argue a little more history knowledge wouldn't go in this, right? And this was driven home to me recently. I was at the British Museum, and I would say I'm not here as a foreigner to insult your British museums. I love British museums. They are the ballsiest thing I've ever seen in my life, right? Because you don't lie about where everything came from, right? That's what we will assume, that you're walking around going, who knew the red such a stone? Yes, we found this in Essex and used it to translate copy writing slang. Don't read it, don't read it. No, you spent a couple of hundred years cruising around the world, killing people and stealing all their stuff. And then you brought it all home, put it in a fancy old building that you now specifically market at tourists visiting from all of those countries. All right? That is incredible. And then on the way out, you ask for donations, which I, I, you've got to admire that, right? And I was at the British Museum with my friend Kareem. He's Egyptian. We were walking out the door. We had a woman who perhaps could have studied some history at some time. Genuinely went, oh, would you two like to make a donation to the British Museum? And my Egyptian mate to his credit went, oh, no, don't worry, I've already made a donation. My granddad's in a box upstairs, right? And I can respect that, right? And the key is, you don't have to major in something. It doesn't have to be your focus. You don't have to do a PhD. You've never finished mine. It's worked out all right so far, right? But just a little bit of knowledge can go a long way, right? For example, I used to love criminology. That was my favourite thing. I loved studying it. It was fascinating changed my life. And the reason it changed my life was not what I learned later on, it's not what I did in post-grad studies, it was my first two or three lectures. You see, I had gone through life in a broadly left-wing household, as many people here, I'm assuming, are looking out at the goldsmith's crowd, right? But if you were to ask me about criminology and criminal justice, I probably would have been tough on crime, I guess. And why wouldn't I be? Everywhere in media, everywhere in politics, the surest path to political safety is tough on crime, isn't it? Despite the fact that the academic consensus that that doesn't work is enough to make climate change scientists jealous, all right? And, and that terrified me after the fact, because I could have gone through my whole life voting on something I didn't fully understand. It took me two 8 a.m. bleary-eyed lectures to realise that none of the evidence supported the position that I'd assumed up until then. And that's one of the most important things I think anyone can have in a diverse, broad, changeable, even messy degree, is having those common sense notions that you have challenged, right? Because you don't need all of them challenged. All you know is need is one or two of those common sense notions to be challenged before you realise that everything that you think you know is up for review, right? And another thing that it taught me uh, is that criminals are people too, too often treated as the other, right? I'll give you a, a little story to highlight how interesting criminals can be and how human they can be, right? I was recently interviewing a serial killer on death row. Now, I know inherently those don't sound like great topics for 10.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning, right? Uh, but serial killers can be quite entertaining. John Wayne Gacy, very famous serial killer. Thank you a nod from some of There's no one else's own. It's like, serial killers, very interesting. I like that. John Wayne Gacy, very famous serial killer, was in court having the list of his heinous crimes read out by the prosecution. When he stood up halfway through, shushed the prosecutor, turned to the judge and went, look, Your Honour, this whole court case is clearly ridiculous. I mean, the most you can charge me with is running a funeral home without a licence. All right? That's a good joke, all right? I'm here to tell you, as a professional, I can respect that. Uh, and the death penalty can be funny and interesting in its own way. Recently, the state of California was sued by the federal US government when it was discovered that they'd rushed through the final appeal of a death row inmate so they could execute him sooner before their current batch of lethal injection drugs passed their use-by date. I know, which begs the question, when potassium chloride goes off, does it kill you better or worse, right? And that's, that we'll never know. But meanwhile, there's a chemistry student in the room going, we knew you'd come crawling back arts degree, right? But I was chatting to the serial killer on death row about his experiences on death row. I said, a lot of the other people I've spoken to here, so they prefer death row, they get to 
shower, sleep, live alone. They feel safe from threats and violence from other inmates. Is this something that you found? And he goes, oh man, woo man, I tell you, no need to be scared of raping the showers when you're the one doing the raping. Fist bump. Right? Now, I don't know what your workshops were like. We didn't cover this in my degree, right? And, and he kept it up too, right? And my mother brought me up to be polite, so I just kind of went, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, oh man, I didn't know you were going to do that. And I was like, well, I'm not going to leave you hanging. And he's like, no, but the government will. <laughs> that, is a, that is an incredible joke, right? I would be on Mock the Week in a heartbeat if I could write jokes that tight, right? That was literal gallows humour. Now, why am I saying this to you? What is the point? Uh, now, there are various things. Some people, Dr. Jim Flynn recommended that a better, wider, more interesting education in university is just to read more books. At my alma mater, University of Auckland, we had general education papers, which meant over the course of your degree, you had to study a minimum of two papers from different degrees. If you were doing an arts degree, you had to choose something from science, a first year architecture paper, and we could do more of those. Basically, no longer can we get by with university as vocation preparation, right? We need broad, diverse, unique, interesting, critically analysed degrees more so than ever. And basically, the most important thing I want to leave you with is that Turkish football is actually really, really interesting. Uh, and more people need to read up on it, right? And now I'm speaking less so to you, perhaps more to the 12 people that will watch this on YouTube. Um, uh, to, to the prospective university students, and I'll end on a quote, as is customary, right? I'll paraphrase Kurt Vonnegut when he said, if you really want to hurt your parents, go into the arts. The arts are not a way to make a living, but they are a very human way of making life more bearable, a way to make your soul grow. And to that I'll add the addendum, if you don't like the arts, go into the humanities. Your soul may remain unchanged, but you'll be a lot more interesting to talk to at a dinner party. And in the end, that must be, might be the most important thing that you learn at university. Uh, I've been Matt Stoneworth. This has been very early in the morning. She's asleep. Have a great night. Take <laughs> <Day. Day. laughs>